Some folks like Elon Musk want to terraform Mars and make it habitable by nuking its poles. It's an idea so out there that it could either be a stroke of genius or a sci-fi fantasy gone too far. In this video, we're about to explore how turning Mars into Earth 2.0 might not be as far-fetched as it sounds. Elon Musk, the brain behind SpaceX and Tesla, suggests a plan that sounds more like a plot from a blockbuster movie, detonating nuclear bombs over the Martian poles. Here's the science behind the spectacle. Mars has vast reserves of carbon dioxide, CO2, and water ice, especially at its poles. Musk's idea hinges on using nuclear explosions not to destroy, but to catalyze change by vaporizing these ice reserves. This would release massive amounts of CO2 into the Martian atmosphere. Why CO2, you might wonder? Well, CO2 is a greenhouse gas capable of trapping heat from the sun. The theory goes that releasing enough CO2 into Mars's thin atmosphere would thicken it and warm the planet, a bit like how Earth's greenhouse effect works, but cranked up to Mars scale. This warming could then potentially allow liquid water to exist on the surface and, in the long run, create a more Earth-like environment. Musk envisions this radical approach as a fast track to terraforming Mars, making it a viable second home for humanity sooner rather than later. By increasing the atmospheric pressure and temperature, we could lay the groundwork for future colonization efforts, from establishing human habitats to eventually growing food on Martian soil. But as bombastic as it sounds, nuking Mars raises a galaxy of questions. Could we generate enough greenhouse gases to make a difference? What about the risks of radioactive fallout or the practical challenges of getting all those nukes to Mars in the first place? Elon Musk's proposal is certainly bold. As we stand at the dawn of the space colonization era, ideas like these spark the imagination and debate necessary to push the boundaries of what's possible. But what does the scientific community have to say about this interplanetary renovation plan? First off, scientists are quick to point out that the devil is in the details, or in this case, the data. While the idea of using nuclear explosions to release CO2 from the Martian poles sounds straightforward, research suggests Mars may not have enough CO2 ice to significantly change the atmosphere. A 2018 study published in Nature suggested that even if all the CO2 on Mars were released, it wouldn't create the dense, warm atmosphere needed for water to stay liquid. Moreover, there's the matter of practicality and safety. Detonating nuclear weapons on another planet isn't without risks, including radioactive contamination. Plus, the logistics of transporting and deploying an arsenal of nukes to Mars poses its own set of challenges. Scientists are wary of the unforeseen consequences such actions might have on Mars's environment or on Earth's, should something go awry. But it's not all skepticism and caution tapes. Some experts appreciate the boldness of Musk's vision, emphasizing the importance of big ideas to push the envelope of space exploration. Even if nuking Mars isn't the answer, the conversation at Sparks could lead to viable terraforming strategies that we haven't yet imagined. Critics and proponents alike agree on one thing, the discussion about making Mars habitable is vital. It challenges our current understanding of planetary science, engineering, and ethics. So while the jury's still out on the feasibility of Musk's proposal, the debate itself moves us closer to the day when humans might truly step foot on a habitable Mars. But what are these other methods scientists are considering? First up, giant mirrors. One proposal involves placing enormous mirrors in orbit around Mars to reflect sunlight onto the planet's surface. This increased solar radiation could potentially warm Mars directly, helping to release CO2 from the soil and ice caps naturally, without the need for nuclear intervention. Next on the list is important greenhouse gases. Instead of relying on Mars's limited CO2 reserves, why not bring in external sources? Scientists have considered the feasibility of capturing asteroids rich in ammonia, a potent greenhouse gas, and directing them to Mars. Upon impact, the ammonia would release into the atmosphere, enhancing the greenhouse effect and warming the planet. 
And let's not forget about microorganisms. Some researchers propose introducing specially engineered microbes capable of surviving Mars's harsh environment. These microbes could produce greenhouse gases as a byproduct of their metabolism, slowly but steadily warming the planet from the ground up. Each of these methods present its own set of challenges and advantages. Giant mirrors, while technologically daunting, avoid the risk of radioactive fallout. Important greenhouse gases could offer a more controlled approach to atmosphere enhancement, but require significant advancements in asteroid capture and redirection technology. And introducing microorganisms hinges on our ability to engineer life forms that can thrive in alien environments, a field still in its infancy. Whether through the power of nuclear science, the brilliance of reflective engineering, the strategic redirection of space resources, or the pioneering use of synthetic biology, the quest to terraform Mars pushes the boundaries of our science, our technology, and our vision for the future of humanity in space. As we continue to explore these incredible possibilities, one thing remains certain. The journey to a habitable Mars is not just about overcoming technical challenges. It's about uniting behind a shared dream of expanding our horizons and securing a future for humanity among the stars. What method do you think holds the most promise? Let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to watch the video on the right and subscribe. Thanks for being part of Cosmonology.